Hello dreamers and welcome to The Sleepy Scholar, the podcast that helps you learn in your dreams. I'm Debbie and tonight I'll be your guide through the mystical corridors of Irish folklore and mythology. Let the soft whispers of ancient tales cradle you in tranquility as we embark on a journey into the enchanting world of the children of Lyr. As we embark on this voyage, imagine yourself surrounded by the serene beauty of Ireland's landscapes. Rolling hills kissed by moonlight, secret glens where legends slumber, and rivers that weave stories into the very fabric of the earth. But before we embark on our journey, I invite you to join the Sleepy Scholar community. Like and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify or Apple Podcasts to stay connected. You can find me on Facebook at Sleepy Scholar, where the dreamers gather. Share your thoughts, requests and the tales you yearn to explore. I am so happy to see our community grow. So please continue to share this with your friends and family, near and far and anyone you know who loves learning and sleeping as much as you do. As we delve into tonight's story, let the gentle cadence of my words and the enchanting melodies carry you away. This is not just a podcast. It's a sanctuary of slumber and discovery. As the day's hustle fades into twilight, let's gently unwind. Find a cosy position, close your eyes and release the cares of the waking world. Breathe in deeply, savouring the quiet. Feel the weight of your worries lift like feathers carried by a gentle breeze. Each exhale releases tension, leaving room for peace to settle within. In this sacred pause, let go. Let go of the day's to-do lists, the unspoken words, the restless thoughts. They drift away now, dissolving into stardust. You are here cocooned in the tender embrace of the night. So, surrender to the stillness where dreams become the gateways to wisdom and let this ancient story unfold. This is The Children of Lyr. Fado, Fado, in ancient Ireland, when the world still danced to the rhythm of legends, there lived a royal family bathed in the gentle glow of serenity. 
picture the castle, not merely a fortress of stone, but a living testament to centuries, nestled among emerald hills that cradled its existence like a protective parent. Turrets reached towards the heavens, kissed by the golden sun, while the air was perfumed with the delicate essence of wildflowers that waltzed in the soft breeze. King Lear, a benevolent ruler, presided over this kingdom with a heart as vast as the boundless Irish sky. His laughter echoed through the halls, a joyous melody resonating with the prosperity of his land. In the courtyard, the laughter of children echoed like cascading waterfalls and the aroma of freshly baked bread lingered in the air, a fragrant reminder of a kingdom thriving in harmony. Queen Eve, the epitome of grace, moved through the castle with the fluidity of a harp's melody. Her presence leaving trails of tranquility in every corner. Their children, Fenula, A, Fiacra and Khan, lived in a symphony of familial love. Imagine the royal gardens, a kaleidoscope of colours, where the laughter of the royal little ones mingled with the rustle of leaves, creating a serene sonnet of unity. This kingdom, this haven, embraced by the natural beauty of Ireland, was a living painting where every stroke of life's brush whispered tales of joy and fulfilment. They didn't realise that destiny, like a quiet storm on the horizon, was preparing to weave its own narrative into the fabric of their lives. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting hues of amber and violet across the kingdom. A tranquil evening descended. The castle seemed to inhale the serenity of the twilight, exhaling an exquisite calm. King Lear, with a heart overflowing with paternal love, gathered his children around the hearth, the warm glow illuminating their faces like flickering stars in the night. Seated on intricately carved wooden chairs, the royal family became a tableau of familial bliss. Fenula, the eldest, with her flowing auburn hair, exuded grace. A, the eldest son, emanated strength. Fiacra and Khan, the young twins, mirrored the innocence of the moon-kissed courtyard. However, the perfect serenity of the royal family's life was fleeting. Queen Eve, 
a flower in the kingdom's meadow, danced briefly beneath the sun before fading too soon. Her voice, as soft as a breeze, vanished, leaving King Lur with a heart heavy with grief. Eve's absence left the castle silent, missing the laughter that painted its walls with joy. Every room held echoes of shared dreams and whispered secrets. Days turned into nights, nights into a perpetual longing, as the love that once bloomed with Eve transformed into a forever ache. Little did King Lear know that destiny in the guise of the raven-haired beauty named Aoife was quietly drawing near, her footsteps echoing in the chambers of the castle long before her formal introduction. In her, Kingler sought solace, and nothing would ever be the same again. The king was greeted at court by Aoife, a beauty whose presence cast a spell of allure over the castle. Her eyes, deep pools, reflecting secrets untold, drew the king into a mesmerizing embrace. As the echoes of Eve's laughter lingered in the air, Aoife's charm became a bittersweet symphony, playing on the strings of King Lear's grieving heart. Aoife, with her raven tresses cascading like a waterfall of midnight silk, moved through the kingdom like a shadow, with intentions veiled in mystery. The court whispered of her origins, whispers that painted her as both a sorceress and a siren, whose past was a tapestry woven with threads of both darkness and allure. Her beauty, like the moon in its full splendour, held the court in rapt fascination. But beneath the surface of her enchanting exterior, Aoife nursed ambitions as deep as the ocean. Her gaze, at times warm as the sun's gentle touch, concealed a calculating brilliance that sought not only to captivate the heart of the grieving king, but to weave a tale of destiny crafted in her own design. And so the king, a vessel adrift in a sea of grief, was unwittingly pulled into the undercurrents of Aoife's desires. A tempest of emotions that would shape the destiny of not only the royal family, but transforming the very heart of the kingdom. Seeking to bring warmth back into their lives, King Lear married Aoife, whose beauty was matched only by the hidden darkness in her heart. At first, she showered the children with affection, but as the days passed, a venomous jealousy took root within her. She yearned for Lur's undivided attention, and in her envy, 
she hatched a sinister plan. One fateful evening, when the moon hung low in the velvety sky, and the air hummed with the secrets of the night, King Lear, shrouded in grief, sought solace in Aoife's company. In a secluded chamber adorned with tapestries, depicting the legends of yore, Aoife revealed the depths of her darkness to King Lear. She betrayed her true nature, one of bitter envy. Her desire for a kingdom where her influence reigned supreme, unmarred by the innocent laughter of the royal children. Under the guise of a picnic, Aoife led the children to the shores of Loch Daravara. The children, innocent and full of trust, played by the water's edge, unaware of the treachery that awaited them. With a whisper of forbidden words, Aoife unleashed a spell, and in a flash of light, the children were no more. In their place, four swans of the purest white glided across the lake. Their eyes brimming with confusion and sorrow. The eldest, Fenula, spoke with a voice that was both haunting and beautiful. What have you done to us, Aoife? The stepmother's reply was a cackle that sent shivers through the air. You shall be swans for nine hundred years across three different waters. Only the sound of a Christian bell can free you from this curse. But then a shadow of remorse overcame Aoife's hardened heart. And she uttered, As there is no other help I can offer, you may keep your own language. You will weave enchanting melodies of the she, so captivating that earthly men will be gently lulled to sleep, unmatched by any other music. Your wisdom and nobility will remain intact, making the burden of your avian forms lighter. Now, go away from my sight, children of Lear, with your pale faces and your musical Irish whispers. It's a harsh fate for young ones to be cast into the brisk wind. Nine hundred years afloat on the water, a long time for anyone to suffer. It was treachery that led me to impose this, and it's in your best interest to do as I say. As the sun set, the royal courtyard, once adorned with the laughter of innocence, now carried the hushed whispers of a kingdom forever changed. King Lur searched frantically for his children, only to find the swans who spoke with familiar voices on Loch Derivara. The truth of Aoife's betrayal shattered his heart, and in his anguish, he banished her from the kingdom forever. 
In the fading twilight each day, the king would sit by the water's edge, a silent companion to the gentle ripples that mirrored the heartache within him. The songs of his swan children echoed across the stillness of the lake, each note a poignant reminder of a love that had endured the cruelest of spells. Their melodies carried the weight of centuries, a haunting symphony that transcended the boundaries between the realms. In that sacred place, King Lear would close his eyes, allowing the sad music to carry him to a realm where time held no sway. For three centuries, the swans glided through the moonlit waters on that lake, a silent ballet under the watchful gaze of the stars. They embraced their fate with a serene acceptance their once human forms, now a testament to the enduring magic that bound them. After 300 years, the swans embraced the rhythm of the sea, their wings caressed by salty breezes, their cries harmonising with the songs of ocean creatures on the Sea of Moyle. A voyage through time, their ethereal forms, now guardians of the sea's untold tales, resonating with the boundless mysteries beneath the moonlit waves. Finally, their journey led them to the enchanting island of Inishglura in County Mayo, where the swans would spend the last 300 years of their mystical odyssey. Picture the isle, a sanctuary bathed in soft moonlight where the swans found solace in the gentle embrace of nature. The children of Lyr became the poets of the isle, their songs a haunting melody that resonated through the ancient trees and whispered to the stars. As they filled the night with their serenades, Nature's very essence responded, creating a tapestry of seamless harmony that cradled their voices like lullabies, reverberating through the universe. As the final chapter of their enchantment unfolded, the swans found themselves once more under the embrace of a moonlit night. The ancient trees cradled their melodies, and the waters whispered the secrets of a millennium. On the Isle of Inishglura, bathed in a shimmering light, the majestic forms of the children of Lyr stood, and the threads of Aoife's spell began to unravel. During this poignant moment, an unexpected visitor graced the shores of Inishglura, the humble monk, Mochevog. Drawn by a higher calling or guided by a divine force, 
Mukwevog stepped onto the sacred isle, sensing the presence of souls entwined in an ancient, sorrowful spell. As Mukwevog traversed the tranquil landscape, the swans felt a subtle shift in the air. A whisper of destiny riding on the breeze, their eyes reflecting centuries of longing and hope, met the monk's compassionate gaze. Mokhoevog, recognising the transcendent nature of his encounter, approached the swans with a sense of purpose. In his possession, Mukwevog carried a relic of immense significance, a Christian bell, a symbol of faith and salvation. Its peel infused with sacred echoes of devotion held the power to break the enchantment that bound the children of Lur to their swan forms. With serene reverence, Mukwevog performed a ritual, a baptism that linked the swans to the spiritual realm. The droplets of holy water, like liquid prayers, fell upon their feathers marking the culmination of a journey that spanned centuries. The bell's pure tone reverberated across the island, resonating with the celestial harmony of redemption as the swan's forms began to change, setting their spirits free from the shackles of an age-old curse. The swans felt the sacred resonance of the bell permeate their very beings. It was a moment of divine alchemy, a merging of celestial forces and earthly souls. The enchantment which had held them captive for 900 years, began to unravel with each resonant peal of the Christian bell. As the final echoes of the bell's peal faded into the night, the swans underwent a transformation. Their feathers, once the embodiment of a magical curse, now shimmered with a newfound radiance. The contours of their swan bodies blurred, and in the mystical dance of light and shadow, the children of Lyr emerged in their human forms once more worn by the passage of time. Mokhoevog, witnessing the culmination of this sacred rite, recognised the magnitude of the moment. A divine intervention that transcended the boundaries of time and enchantment. The swans, now freed from the shackles of their existence as birds, stood on the shores of Inishglora, their eyes reflecting the myriad emotions of joy, relief and gratitude. In that sacred moment of transformation, the children of Lur found themselves in the embrace of each other, their human forms restoring the familial bonds that had endured centuries of separation. 
as they stood on the moonlit shores, their reunion was a poignant testament to the resilience of love and the healing power of redemption. The enchantments unravelling not only set their spirits free, but also mended the threads of a tapestry torn by the cruelty of fate. Their farewell, though bittersweet, carried the weight of centuries. Finula, A, Con and Fiocra, now once again human, embraced each other, tears of joy mingling with the sorrow of a life lost to enchantment. The celestial harmony of the night bore witness to their gratitude, their laughter and their shared journey through time. Soon after their blessing, the children of Lyr passed from this world, their spirits soaring high, finally free to join their parents in the realms beyond. As we bid farewell to the children of Lyr, let their journey linger in our thoughts, a testament to the transformative power of time, nature and the enduring bonds of family love. In the quiet embrace of Inishglora, their spirits now rest, joining the whispers of the wind and the rustle of the leaves, eternally entwined in the tapestry of myth and reality. As we delve into the symbolism of the story, we find profound connections to the realms of personal growth and resilience. The children of Lyr, trapped in their swan forms for nine centuries, embody the endurance of the human spirit amidst adversity. Their journey resonates with the transformative power of time, the endurance of familial love, and the indomitable strength required to navigate the ebb and flow of life's challenges. Fanula, A, Khan and Fiachra, despite the curse that befell them, retained their wisdom, nobility and the ability to create enchanting melodies. This reflects our human capacity to preserve our essence and creativity, even in the face of hardship. The swan's resilience mirrors our own struggles, urging us to find strength in adversity and emerge with a new found radiance. The bell's rich tones, a symbol that transcends any specific faith, play a crucial role in breaking the curse that binds the children of Lyr. This emphasises redemption and underscores the transformative power of personal growth and self-belief. The story prompts reflection on our own individual journeys, inviting opportunities for self-renewal. Though an ancient tale the story continues to resonate with modern issues of envy, betrayal and the enduring human struggle against dark forces. Aoife's jealousy and treachery find echoes in today's narratives, 
prompting reflection on the consequences of unchecked desires and their impact on personal relationships. The children of Lurie's experience as swans, creating mesmerizing melodies, parallels the transformative role of art and storytelling in today's world. In times of hardship, creativity becomes a beacon, offering solace and inspiration. This podcast aims to ignite the creative spark within each listener and within me, in spite of life's challenges. Of course, the story also touches on themes of loss, grief and the pursuit of redemption. Universal struggles faced by individuals and societies alike. Through the children of Allure, we see that healing is possible, even after enduring the darkest of curses. Like the swans, we too can find redemption and renewal in the embrace of wisdom and love. It's crucial to acknowledge that the story also introduces themes that may be considered problematic through a modern lens. One such aspect deserving reflection is the portrayal of Aoife, embodying the archetype of a stepmother with sinister intentions. Her actions driven by jealousy and treachery align with certain stereotypes prevalent in folklore. While recognising that these portrayals often served didactic purposes, cautioning against unchecked desires, it's equally important to be mindful of the deeper misogyny embedded in this narrative. This, however, offers us an opportunity to learn from the past and strive for better in the future. The tale of the children of Lyr finds its origins in the ancient manuscripts of Irish mythology, particularly in texts like the Book of Invasions. These ancient chronicles weave together the mystic history of Ireland, introducing us to characters who embody the enduring spirit of the land. The narrative of the children of Lyr has its roots in the Thuha de Danann, a mythical race in Irish folklore often associated with gods and otherworldly beings. King Lyr became a central character in this myth, blending the historical and the fantastical in a captivating tale. The story setting amidst the lush landscapes of Ireland reflects the deep connection our ancestors felt with the natural world infusing their tales with the very essence of the land. As we cast our gaze beyond the mystical shores of Ireland, we discover echoes of the Children of Lyra story in various cultures worldwide. Across the globe, tales of transformation and resilience form a universal narrative that transcends geographical boundaries. In Greek mythology, the story of King Midas and his golden touch shares a parallel with the consequences of unchecked desires seen in Aoife's character. Both cautionary tales delve into the human psyche exploring the profound impact of our actions on others and on those around us. Similarly, in Eastern traditions, the concept of reincarnation and transformation 
resonates with the Children of Lur's journey through different forms. The cyclical nature of life and the pursuit of spiritual enlightenment echo in the swan's enduring quest for redemption. In connecting these global tales, we discover a shared human experience, a collective wisdom passed down through the generations. The children of Lur, with their enchanting story, join the ranks of narratives that transcend time and culture, inviting us to reflect on the threads that bind us all in the tapestry of existence. As the echoes of the children of Lur's story linger in the sacred spaces of your mind, I extend you now a warm and comforting farewell. May the swan songs of Fanula, A, Khan and Fiachra accompany you into the realm of dreams, painting a portrait of peace beneath the vast night sky. Embrace the gentle whispers of the night and until we meet again may your dreams be as enchanting as the timeless tale we've shared thank you for joining me here on the sleepy scholar on this journey into the heart of irish mythology sleep well sleep peacefully dream sweetly and may the enduring Irish legends surround you with calm and peace. Ihawai. Good night.